Hey there, I'm Yolanda Neff, and this is the Dirt Chat Show. Yes, welcome to the Dirt Shed Show with Chain Reaction Cycles, of course, and Yolanda Neff and Chris Smith. How you doing? You're oh right? my god, you just did a thumbs up when I said Yolanda Neff. You're not Yolanda Neff. I know, I got, might look like But we like have got Yolanda Neff on the show. Nice. How cool is that? That's so cool. She is amazing. Do you know much about Yolanda Neff? Because you're I not know. really an XC buff. It's not my X, you know, it's not yeah. my strongest thing, XC, but I know a little about her, and she is absolutely awesome on the bike. An amazing rider. Yeah, incredible bike skills. Incredible bike skills. Yeah, she's flipping call we've got an interview with her coming up in a mo but don't worry all the normal stuff is happening on the dirt shed show this week we're going to be looking at the bike vault going to be looking at the sends of the week i've got a quiz question for chris but he will never get right he will not get it right um and of course that interview and without further ado why don't we just get straight into it and see what yolanda had to say to the dirt shed show To be honest, I really wonder. I really wonder how it will turn out. I really wonder what the effect will be that I'll feel. I like right now at the moment. I feel like I have some more explosivity, some more power. But I also don't know if uh, I will have to see how good my base is. How good? Yeah, this is gonna help me. Like this is the second time only now that I've done cyclocross racing during the winter. So. I will really have to see how how it affects my summer, how it affects my performance, and then after that I will decide how I will go on for next winter. No, I really don't think so. I I love doing it. I love riding downhill. I I love it so much. Like I could do it every day, and I would still like. Yeah, I love it, but I don't really think that I will ever do any competition in indoor or downhill. Oh, like, I like it. I like it. Um, I just think it's, like, not exactly the same as the XCO that we have on Sunday, um, because that's really technical and asks for a lot of skills. And I think the other one is, like, it's good as a warm-up and I was surely happy that they made another event. It gives, gives us another chance to, yeah, like do our sport and like get the coverage and yeah, show what we do. So I think the approach is great. I would just wish they made it a bit more technical or hopefully they are going to change that a bit for next year and make it a bit more mountain bike wise. Um, it's funny, I talked to my sister recently and she said, do you actually know that you are your own biggest rival? <laughs> and I had to stop for five seconds and be like, yeah, actually that's true. That's, uh, that's really, really true. Like, it's funny, like when I'm healthy and I'm feeling good and I, I, I know what I can do, then I feel, I feel just, I feel good and I love what I, yeah, what I'm doing and I love racing and I love training and then everything is fine and then I, I think it doesn't really matter. Ah, for 2019, yes, of course. Um, so yeah, I, I, want to, I want to win the World Cup again. That's a goal. Um, yeah, but my biggest goal is to regain the World Champion jersey. Um, which I've uh, yeah won in Cairns, and uh, I really want to win that jersey. Amazing. That is not going to get old. Having Yolanda Neff on the Dirt Shed Show, I'm pretty Definitely pumped not. about that. That's amazing. I Tyler love having show. top pros just yeah. even know what the Dirt Shed Show is. Exactly. That's so International good. International recognition. <laughs> yes. Yes, man. That woman, she is unbelievable. Um, I'm really excited about her racing on that trek this year because mm. she's teamed up now with Emily Batty. Right. Who's been a kind of um, big, competitor. big competitor through the last couple of years. Emily Batty had a really good year last year. Now they're on the same team. Not sure what that dynamic's going to do. And then, of course, we've got Kate Courtney who won the world championship at the end of last year yeah. and and really put the cat amongst the pigeons. I can imagine. Yes. I think it's quite good for yeah. a team to have two similar athletes because they can push each other even further and push them harder and harder yeah. to push them yeah. away from the you know the, the closer runner riders. Yeah. Have that elite athletes pushing it. another elite athlete is going to make them amazing. Mm. Yeah, interestingly though, like like in the interview, she's saying like her biggest competitor is herself. 
Really? And she's not worried. She's not worried. So yeah, I mean, um, I think if she's on form, she's pretty confident. But yeah, I'm really excited about the XC season coming up. I can't wait. Right, talking about excitement. And I Train. think that's just a message from Chris's phone saying it's time for the news. Thanks, Martin. Yeah, and of course, um, I'm here in the dirt shed for once, uh, taking over the news. And it's quite techy this week. And actually, the first thing I want to talk to you about is it looks like, from what Trek are teasing, that they might be making some bikes from a natural composite. Now, you don't need me to spell that out as being a good thing, because of course, carbon fiber is tricky stuff to recycle. Now, in the aerospace industry, they have managed to do this successfully, and it's something that was definitely going to be trickling down into cycling, but it is definitely something proving difficult. Now, carbon's been around for a long time in cycling. The first company to actually produce a carbon bike was a company called Kestrel, and that was way back in 1988. Now, Trek were hot on the heels in 1989 with their first bike, but really it wasn't until 92 until they refined it with the OCLV technology, which is what they still run today. Now Trek, I think it's fair to say they're one of the global leaders in carbon fiber bike manufacturing. And for them to tease this little video on their Instagram page and on their website, I think this is pretty exciting stuff. Now I'd love to know what you all think about what Trek are about to unveil. Now it's coming soon, Pretty sketchy with their details, but if you keep an eye out on their website and on their social media in the coming weeks, there is going to be an announcement. It's going to be very cool, but what's it going to be? And do you think a natural fiber is going to cut it against carbon fiber? Let us know in those comments below. Definitely keen to pick this one up. Now, next up is rubber based. Now, this is over to Pirelli, which are well known in the motorsport world and more recently in the road cycling world for producing some excellent road tires. And you guessed it, they're involved in mountain biking now. Now, their mountain biking range of tires, the entire range is known under the Scorpion name, which I, th I find a little bit confusing myself. So the Scorpion range apparently is what they already produce tires for the motocross bikes under, and they do the same thing. They keep the Scorpion name for the entire range and they produce different style tires under that name. Um, but Scorpion to me suggests pinching and that sort of thing. So is this a good idea? Who knows? Well, have a look on screen now and you're going to see a few options. So the thing that's interesting is each of their tires come in a hard and a light or a medium and a light, soft and a light, rear and a light. You guessed it, the light version simply implies it's a lighter carcass, so it's more suitable for cross country or lighter duties and the regular one for harder duties. Now it appears they use a single compound for their tires, which they call Smart Grip, which they assure does provide the optimum grip in all conditions. But um, who knows, we shall see. Definitely keen though, because Pirelli has gotta be a good thing, I think, if they're coming to the mountain biking world. Now next up, bear with us here, is an e-mountain bike. Now this is from Lapierre, this is their new e-Zesty, which uses the Fazua system. Now this is a brand new concept as far as e-mountain bikes go, and it's far less reliant on a powerful motor system like you already see from Bosch and Specialized and all the other brands that are on the market. The thing that's really cool about this is without the battery in it, the bike weighs around 15 kilos. And the whole point of the bike is it's a very modular system. You can run it with or without the battery. It comes with a blanking battery, so it's effectively just a blank tube that you can use for storage, like an enduro style frame storage solution. And you can run the bike with or without assistance. Now the assistance it provides is not as much as your traditional e-bikes, but it definitely opens up the category to a bike that is more suitable for someone who wants occasional assistance. Perhaps you want to do some self-shuttling and you want a regular mountain bike for the rest of the time. Now part of the beauty of this is the Fazua system, when you're not pedaling, basically the gearbox itself that's part of the motor is disconnected from the way you pedal. So you're not pedaling around those gears and you're not subject to the same friction as you are with some of the other systems. So could this be the best of both worlds? Well, what I'm gonna do is throw a link in the description below this video to the video they did over on EMBM when I have a full look at this bike. I think this is fascinating. It could definitely be something I've been looking for because I don't know if I'm that committed yet to go for a full-time e-bike. I quite like the idea of having the best of both worlds. Okay, and Marin Bikes or Marin Bikes are back on it again and they've just released their latest version, the 2019 model of the Mount Vision. Now this bike uses the React 2-play suspension system, uh, which is also seen on Polygon brands. Now this particular orientation of suspension is very unique. So it's got a four bar 
star system on the back but it's also got a slider there now this sliding i guess you'd call it a stanchion because it operates like that what it enables the suspension system to do is it has an opposite effect to what your weight is doing when you're pedaling so normally you would assume the bike would want to squat naturally under your body weight don't confuse this with pedal bob or anything this is more about what your body weight does to the bike now the whole idea of the react system is it puts an opposite force onto the back end of the bike so the bike is going to literally want to lurch forwards as you pedal not squat backwards now apparently they ride fantastically they pedal literally like a rigid bike except it has completely ground hugging suspension at the same time a very unique stance on the way you would make a bike handle now something that's especially unique about this is the shock that's valve for them has 60 percent less damping than the same equivalent shock used on another suspension system now to me that's kind of sounds alarm, alarm bells ringing but also i'm fascinated by this I've always believed that the damper on a bike should be doing just that, but if it requires less damping and there's other stuff going on, that sounds really quite intelligent in the way it works. Now, I do know a little bit about this, but I've not had any time on one. I'd love to try one out, just a you know, curiosity killed the cat and all that, but it sounds like a really interesting concept. Okay, and next up, we're gonna announce a couple of competition winners. And this was to win the FSA Flowtron dropper post, which is named after a flow trail in the Pacific Northwest. Now the two winners, the names are up on screen right now is Isle Willand and Gerard O'Keefe. So congratulations, you are the lucky winners of two seat posts, one each that is. We'll be in touch over email in the coming days. It's all happening, isn't it? It is going it's off all happening. everywhere. It's going off. Right, quiz time, Chris. What have you got? Now, we had Yolanda starring, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to do a Yolanda Neff themed question. Right. Okay? So, simple question. Which year did Yolanda Neff win the World Cross Country Championships? Oh, good question, Mark. Let good me question. think on that one. Yeah, have a little think on that. And while you do, let's take a look at some fails and bells and your sends of the week. Love it. Love sends of the week. Fails so were good. nasty. Pretty bad. Oh, That's I think like the, the fail send double header is full on that, isn't it? What was your favourite send? Um, I think the one from Daniel practising those 180s up the flat bank, you know, yeah. City Park style was pretty impressive. Stuck with it, two big slams, but yeah, yeah getting up from them and finally nailing it. That's what it's yeah. about, right? His last one was really nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that crash off the coping yeah. down to flat. You been all, there? All done that. Mm, all not, done that one. one. Um, I like little Lee on his push balance bike. Mm, that was crazy. It's crazy how young they are on oh, bikes now and just start sending it off stuff. Yeah, yeah. Love it. I love sends, it's for everyone. 
Everyone can send it. We it's really cool. Right, before Thousand Bales and Send of the Week, I asked you a quiz question. Yolanda Neff, uh, what year did she win the World Cross Country Championships? Mm, Difficult. Cross Country, not my hottest subject. But I no. think it was, was it 2018 when she had that big battle with two flats? No, it wasn't. No? No, it wasn't. It was 2017. It was ah, a bit of a trick question, close. right? Because she's actually won four World Cross right. Country Championships. Three under 23 and then she won it in 2017 in Elite. So she's smashing it. Yeah, it's but massive. she wants that rainbow jersey back from Kate Courtney, who won it last year. Yeah, she's yeah. got a work out of this season. She time. has, she has. Yeah, and you must be excited about cross country now, you're into it. Like 20, 20 minutes in. I think it has been 20 minutes. You've yeah, been here. yeah, definitely. Right, it's time for Hacks and Bodges. Before we start, Hacks and Bodges, right, um, I just want to uh, tell you all about this now. Rally Mad RS, okay, he won Hacks and Bodges a few weeks nice. ago, yeah. right? So Wicked got £100, right? And he just sent us in a little message to say, Hi, GMBN crew, it's Daniel, your Hacks and Bodges winner last week, which it was. Um, I bought new handlebars. Nice. Um, I, with the voucher, got a Rentful Fat Bar Carbon. Good choice. Banger, banger. That's what can happen. Let's do Jeez. it. Hacks and bodges, hacks and bodges, hacks and bodges, hacks and bodges. Chris, come on. Not come on, man, up. put some energy into it. Not feeling it. No, not into the singing this week. Okay, man. The bell's got a bit of a ring to it. Yeah. Uh, right, hacks and bodges. Of course, with chain reaction cycles, we've got £100 to give away uh, to the best hack or bodge this week. Nice. Um, I love this bit of the show, Chris, because giving away £100 doesn't get old. No, it's good. That's it? what I I've noticed. It doesn't get old. <laughs> I would love I have never won £100. Maybe a couple of times I won £100, but £100 would be good to win, wouldn't it? Would be good. You spend yeah. a load of bike stuff on Yeah, it. actually, once I won £5,000. I won £1,000 here on the raffle, remember, at Christmas? Oh, you did, didn't you? Yeah. Our raffles are good. <laughs> really good. Our parties, the Dirt Shed Show parties are good. Anyway, moving on, hacks and bodges. £100 to give away. Let's see what... This week it's sort of a little bit customization themed, because you remember... Um, a couple of weeks ago on the Dirt Shed Show, I was talking about customising things. Um, this was the helmet I did for the show. It's so good, um, I've got a gloss coat on it now. Yeah, it's it quite so a nice, yeah. How do I, how do I look? Pretty good. It's cool. It Pretty sick, so eh? Yeah. 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 Wow, so, um, and amazingly, right, some of you guys have got involved in the customisation um, and sent us in some of your results. I thought it was going to fall off there. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so let's take a look at those, see if they can win £100. What have you got, Chris? I got this one in from Russ. Looks pretty cool, actually. Being that is nice. Sharpie art. Yes. That. Pretty sweet. Yeah. If you're looking for any ideas on how to customise your helmet um, or any part of your bike, if you Google Sharpie art, you'll get a billion ideas because right. they do it on cars and cool. oh, just amazing. Just black, white, or you can use all the colours, but black, white works Does really, really well. Out really good. Um, yeah, I, nice I've got right. a Sharpie. Heart, a sharpie heart, full face lid, and it looks mental. Cool. Um, very nice, Russ. Very I like that. Um, yeah. I have got one here from I like this one from Brian. Look nice. at that, bit of a union flag yeah. and some mountains, mountains the trees. Nice, really nice, nice lid. It's so simple, right? Because actually, when you see this up close, you can see it's not. It's not the the uh, close up detail that really matters. It's like from a little bit of distance, it looks sick. It does look so good, doesn't it? Is that Sharpie again then? Or I think that's a bit of paint actually, a bit of paint work. Yeah. <laughs> Getting a bit pro here. Yeah? Uh, Brian from, like it. Does look good. This one in from Jan as well. It's looking pretty cool. I Still like a bit that. Of customization on just on the P. Detail. Gone Some into the detail. Work. Bit of bit of sticker bombing on the outside there. Looks look, Seth well. bike hack sticker bomb. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Like that one. Who's that from? Jan. Yeah. Jan. Yeah. I like that one a lot. And one more. One more. This one's in from Luke as well. I've been busy with his pock helmet. <laughs> yes. Skate helmet. He's pocked it camo. up. Camo. Camo look. I like that one a lot. It's almost like camo tie dye. Isn't it? <laughs> it's but really yeah, cool. Amazing look as well. Do you know what, hey man? It's hard to pick between any of those because they're kind of like people's artwork. And I don't really want to say one's better than the other. You can't distinguish artists, right? I can help us out, right? What have you got? Because I saw a bit, a little, little bit of hacky, bodgy type tech right. in the in the uploader uh -huh. that I really liked. Um, I think you might have seen this before, but I've never seen this before. I thought it was such a cool idea. It's oh, from wow. Sabine. Look at this. Recycling look. Look at that, right? So using like your uh, 
you roll a paintbrush type mm -hmm. thing, put it in your axle at the rear there, yeah. and then just spin your pedals and clean your chain. Clean your chain, lube the chain. That is a wicked idea. Stuff. That's cool, isn't it? That it's is a really wicked good. idea. Yeah, get some I like chain that degreaser on there. Yeah. Strip your chain down. Wow, good. I really like that idea. That's clever. So I think, right, because I don't want to pick between people's customization, because yeah. I liked them all, I'm going to go with Sabine this week, and it's 100 pounds. Nice one. Congratulations, oh, 100 so quid. Like that a lot. Um, if you've got a little bit of hack or bodging that you'd like to send in, remember the upload is there for you to use. Send it in, you could be winning 100 pounds. Best of luck. It's time for the caption contest. Last week we had an amazing wedding cake sent in. Yeah. Well, we didn't get the cake, unfortunately. unfortunately I liked that cake. That would have been better, wouldn't it? Yeah, but yeah, this uh, cycling themed wedding cake. It yeah. look cool. It did. I thought, I put it in the caption contest because I thought, oh, wow, that's weird. I actually got some brilliant captions from it. Right. It was so worth it. Um, I love it. Right, first one is from Tim Garland. It says, unfortunately, this is when we figured out the marriage couldn't last. He was Shimano and she was SRAM. <laughs> <laughs> that's it's pretty good. good. Yeah, like that's that. the first one. It gets better. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Right, next one. Paulington Goose says the groom's choice of decoration left both the cake and the bride in tears. Tears. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Matthew Hodgkiss says, be careful not to break the wedding cake. Break the wedding cake. Oh right, and the last one, Richard Langsley. Breaks ain't working, feels a bit spongy. <laughs> I think definitely Rich. Spongy cake! <laughs> Rich Langley, definitely with that last uh, comment, uh, this bottle's coming straight out to you. <laughs> right in the camera. This week's caption contest is coming in from a member doing a one-handed wheelie round the fountain out in Spain. I think Jerez is in Spain. I think it? so, I think so. But get your captions down in the comment box below and you could be the lucky winner of the GMBM bottle. Yeah. Okay, let's have a look at what you guys have been saying on the channel this week. Um, first off, in last week's Dirt Shed show, uh, we were talking about trends, uh, but we had a good question coming in from Photo Store saying, can flat earthers still enjoy mountain biking? What's a flat earther, man? <laughs> well, I mean, someone who believes the world isn't a ball, oh, okay, they right, believe right. it's a disc. Really? Right, so surely there's like no fun there, is there? No is downhill, no uphill? Is that right? Well, I guess they just sort of think there's kind of like texture. <laughs> You know, like Actually like mountain-sized texture, but the but basically it's not a ball, it's a disc. It's like right, a record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So can I guess they can. Good? I guess they can because there's still mountains. Yeah, of course. They don't. They're not saying there's no there's no height. No, no. Height the dimension of height still exists. Right, but no. But yeah. there is an edge. So we could fall off the edge, is what you said. What I want to know is why aren't we mountain biking near that? Why aren't we? Yeah. The photo Imagine. would be incredible. Space down below. Oh, you know, balancing right on the old edge there, like whoa. Nearly off into the abyss. Yeah, right, carrying on. Um, on our commute to work video, which I love, Doddy just sending it big time through, through our local city here. Yeah, he took some risks, didn't he? He did. Did look crazy. All those steps and drops, ledges, yeah, things like yeah, that. Yeah, I like that a lot. Um, we got one from HLB, um, and it's uh, I bike to school every day. I built a jump outside my school so I get there early and practice jumps. Nice. That's, <laughs> That's awesome. That's mountain biking, making you better at school. Yeah and you're getting better jumps. Two into one. Win-win. Right, let's take a look at what's coming up on the channel this week, stuff you cannot miss on GMBN. Yeah, busy week as ever on GMBN. Chris, what are you looking forward to? Well, we've been busy. We've got a How To Jib video coming out where we're going backwards, forwards, spinning around like all those cool guys, 50 to one, Pilgrim, McCaskill, showing you how to do all those moves on your full suspension and trail bikes. Nice. No, I bet you love that. It was good fun. Oh, that's yeah. so you, that is. You're a, you're like a jib fest. <laughs> I am jibber, yeah. king jibs. Yeah, um, I tell you what, this week we've got more of Blake's vlog from, um, I guess it's Andy's Pacifico mm -hmm. coming up or Patagonia, yeah, but right. basically he's out in a, a very nice trip. It We're all amazing. a little bit jealous. Um, and uh, yeah, we've got some more of that coming up this week. So don't miss out. Make sure you see what's going. Right, it's time for the bike vault. Bike vault time. We've got three bells. Let's do it. Look at the uh, bikes you've sent in this week. First one is from Dylan. Whoa. Dylan's Mizani. It's 
pretty cool, isn't it? Like mag wheels. <laughs> mag wheels. Don't see that very often. No, I had a rally boner um, with a set of mags on it. That is in Northern Ireland. Nice yeah. shot seeing the background. Nice. That's a nice to start off with, isn't it? Good work, yeah, for sure. More than that? No, nice. It's nice. Let's start it's off nice. with nice. It's nice. Too carried away. Two mug guards. Yeah, nice. Nice, like that. Okay, oh. next up, Norco Fat Boy. Sorry, it's a Norco Bigfoot. This is from Luke. Um, in Canada. The snow. Oh, there's so much snow in my part of the world. Yeah. Studded oh, tires yeah. or not? I can't tell. Is that just snow in the? I think tread? it's just snow on the on the peaks of the um, tread. Mm -hmm. um, I like it a lot. I've you got to say, like I do like it a lot. You yeah, I tell you what, I really forks. like on a fat bike, right? Yeah. I really like a rigid front fork because mm. yeah, I, I like a big old mm. big old carbon. I'm, I'm gonna go super nice. Super nice. Super Come nice. on, hit it. Super nice. Luke, you lucky boy. Whoa, oh, retro. Yeah. Where's Doddy? He'd go mental he for would, this. He? He'd literally go mental for this. It's a Mar Marin Eldridge grade yeah. uh, from Rob. God, I remember literally looking at this bike mm -hmm. in a brochure back in 1992. Really? I really do, yeah. Did you get one of those for your 40s? I never got <laughs> What, in 1998? <laughs> uh, I mean, it's a super nice for me. It's a super nice. Super no, nice. No, no. Look at that. It is a classic, old school, hardtail beauty. Nice. Oh, I love it. Thank you, Rob, for sending that in from San Francisco, that was. Right, right next up, <laughs> hey, check this out. <laughs> we have got Ruben and his Orbea. Um, it's fully custom. Having a little bit, he's literally giving it a glass of champagne. <laughs> Rob, you, Ruben, you've gone <laughs> too champagne far. Champagne on the brake cables. Um, he's Candle broke, lit dinner as well. He's look. broken a, yeah, he's broken a, hey. you know, major rule of the bike vault of putting yourself in the bike vault, but he oh. has got a GMBN jersey. So and, yeah, it's gone to quite a bit of effort for this shot. I think right? we've got to give him a super it's nice because it's so, so full on. If you're going to go to that kind of trouble, you can probably win yourself a super nice. <laughs> right, next up is Callum's pole. pole. Yeah, he's a, a pole massive. Uvo link. Mm -hmm. He's is done that, really is well that to get the... incredibly long? I was going to say, you've done really well to get the front wheel and the shot on that, <laughs> on that whole frame, actually. <laughs> that so is massive. One of my friends has got one of his bikes. Wow. He has to take it to bits to fit it in the back of his car. Is that right? Mm -hmm. It's yeah, big. I mean, massive, it's a slack, slack, slack front long, end. Long, long wheel base, but, but it rides good, though. The photo looks good. Backdrop's cool, isn't it? What Super you nice, isn't it? Super, Super nice. nice. Yeah, I like, nice. I like the bike. <laughs> nice blue sky. The geometry's mental, but I bet it rides amazing. Mm. Uh, it'd suit me down to the ground, that one. Um, right, this is Chris's Yeti. He's not gone with the classic Yeti blue right. stroke green. I don't yeah, know what yeah. you call it. He's gone with like a strong green. I think that's a mistake. <laughs> I, I like the green, yeah. but I like to see a Yeti in a Yeti colour. I don't yeah. know. Does anyone know what the colour's called? I don't know what it's called. It's it's turquoise, is it it's turquoise? turquoise. Yeah, yeah. Nick says turquoise. turquoise Comments yeah. below. Let me know what it's called because I do like the colour. Mm. Uh, kind of lost a bit in the background with the green, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I'd say it's nice. nice. It's nice. I ain't giving away a super nice unless it's in the right colour. <laughs> it's nice. Harsh, Don't get me wrong. Harsh. It's nice. And we're out of the bike vault. Wow. That's short this week. I can't believe that. I think you've got a malfunction here, haven't we? Oh, oh we're back we in. What's <gasps> going on there? Retro goodness again. I think we've missed one. There it is, there, yeah, it's too. back in right. Nick, Nick's Norco, thank the Lord, we nearly didn't get to see this. It's, um, well, it gets a super nice for just turning up. I love the matching mud guard and the rock shocks with the Norco red. Mm -hmm. It's got everything going on for me, Chris. Snow downhill bikes, you can't beat it, yeah, super nice. Super nice, super nice. Uh, next up we've got, oh, look at this, Kona Kilua. More retro. Remember the Project Two fork? You used to have them on a few trials. Yeah, back yeah, in the day. yeah. Yes, I had that fork, mm -hmm. and I, I had it with like in white with kind of graffiti blue drizzle That's paint it. all over it. I remember adding yeah. an extra slack of two degrees head yeah, angle on one yeah. by landing a drop flat. And Maybe it was, like... it was in blue. <laughs> yeah, bending <laughs> yeah, out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. My first um, 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 magazine cover shot mm -hmm. is is I didn't get the cover shot actually. Horsey did. No. Um, but uh, Horsey, isn't that just like Horsey? Eh? You know what you're like. Pretend you're not watching. Of course you are. Um, uh, <laughs> this is in Hereford. It's like it's like that Marin from earlier on. It's super it's nice. Got to be isn't super it? nice. Love all that retro. You just can't go wrong with it. If you've got a bike like that old and it looks that good, you've got to show it off. Exactly. Uh, wow, that is one hell of a phallic uh, <laughs> monument. <laughs> this is Dave there. Scott Spark next to quite the erection. <laughs> I'd say that is super nice. Super nice. Look at it. Look at it. Oh, it's flaming amazing. Um, that is literally. 
match for the end of the bike mark this week. Uh, super nice to finish there. Um, if you've got a bike, you should send it in because it might get super nice from yeah. us guys. I don't know what that means, but I'm sure it doesn't feel bad. So send it in and uh, we'll take a look. Hopefully your bike will be here next week. Right, you might be starting to get out on your bike. It is that time of year after all. Sun starting to, it's sunshine and starting to ride. So it's as good a time as any to get yourself into the GMBN squad. How do you do it? Well, you go to the GMBN shop and you get yourself a GMBN race top. Mm. Because that's how you'd be like part of a crew. Looking it? good out on the yeah, trail. Yeah, it's like how you bump into each other at a trail centre and go, all right, all right, yes. Yeah, I've got you. Yeah, so if you want to get involved, and we would love you to, and we appreciate the support, head over to the shop and get yourself a team jersey. Um, there's some wicked ones at the moment. Uh, what's been your favourite over the past? Because the colours change now and again. I like the gold and black one. Gold and black's favorite, nice. Yeah. That's kind of that's becoming a classic. My favourite's the orange and blue. Oh yeah, I like Super that one. one. Yeah, yeah, I do yeah. like it. It's yeah. proper colour. And colors. the white camo one. Yeah. I love the that original. one. Yeah, yeah, that's my Whistler one. I like that a lot. Yeah, so yeah, make sure you check out the shop and have a look at our race jerseys uh, and all the other stuff, of course, mm -hmm. hats and tees and all sorts of things. Um, thank you for watching the Dirt Show show this week. It's been amazing, Chris. Thank you for. Joining no us. worries, thanks for having me, Martin. Lots of fun. Yeah, Lots if you fancy fun. sticking with us, we've got Martin doing an amazing video on how to build confidence. Yes. I'm really looking forward to seeing that. Click the old globe there to subscribe to GMBN and never miss a video. And before you go, give us a thumbs up, like, and we will see you next week.